know, I'm not Cuban, but when I started, I'm an actor by trade, so I traveled around and did theater and, and movies and things of that nature, so I would fight in other kingdoms and learn sword blows, and that's when I discovered all the stuff that I had missed the first part of my career growing up, and then that just kind of fueled me to start practicing more sword and shield and going around to the different kingdoms, because each region has its own method of how they want to apply that tool. But I, I will get into that a little bit later. I, I want to start off, um, I looked at a lot of the, uh, the instructional videos that you guys kind of listen to. And most of the time people talk about, this is how you throw this shot, this is what I do, and everything. But I'm a different person. I'm about self-actualization. How you throw a flat snap is different. How you throw a flat snap is different than how you. I don't want you to emulate him, and I don't want you to emulate him. I want you to figure out what you do, because that's the only way that you're going to be able to take anything from somebody else's style. You have to know your strengths, you have to know your weaknesses, and you have to be complacent with those. Whatever your weakness is, it can't be, aw, uh, it has to be, yes, yeah, that's my weakness. I'm working towards closing that weakness down, but you have to be accepting of that because you have to be honest and truthful with yourself if you're going to become a true warrior. So you have to know what's going to happen, where people are going to target you, and so forth. And that's all part of the strategy and technique. When I got in the SCA, there was, first of all, I'd like to say this kingdom has done with Misty, with Arminius, I believe is how you say his name, uh, with Vilius, all of you that have been putting tape out there on YouTube, God bless you. Because when I was sick and cancer and in bed, that was my lifeline. That was my, uh, my goal, is to beat the cancer and come back and be able to fight again. And to watch the progression from where it was when I had to leave to where it is gone is basically this kingdom. So to me, kind of the center mecca of uh, the fighting world at this point in time. Because over time, kingdoms, when they grow up, they shift over to a more courtier political style of kingdom. And what I really like here is that you guys have kept it centered on Marshall, but yet still have respect for the Pelicans and Laurels, and they have respect for what this uh, what fighting has done for the SCS, because this really is how it started. People come and to watch that, and then other things branch from that. And somehow, I don't know how you've done it, I think you guys have been a kingdom now for what, 16, 17 years? 90? 24. 24, 24. Okay, so I'm with all. Uh, but my thing is, that's a long time for it not to be drawn away from the fighting and more towards the politics and courtier style bickering. Everybody has their own family issues and stuff. So I want to say that, that foremost. Also, a lot, I've noticed that a lot of what you would consider your mid-range fighters are exceedingly well, uh, or most kingdoms, you know, night level entry. So that, to me, shows that you're teaching, or whoever is teaching, or, or with her bringing people in, everybody is gleaning that information, plus YouTube. When I got in, you would go to Penzen. That was the best place to go. Two weeks, the fighting didn't start till the second week. It started on Thursday through Saturday. You would get there the first two weeks. You would get up in armor at 8 a.m. and fight till 4. And you'd roam around and you'd go, okay, here's the Atlanteans. And they'd all be like in their little thug gang group throwing signs. And then <laughs> you'd go over to the mid realm and they had their whole thing. And so you would go there to get beat up to learn shots. How I won? My first crown was because of a shot that somebody showed me at Penzo. I'm a young dude walking around. Uh, I meet Dukon the Mighty. So we're fighting. He proceeds to beat the crap out of me because uh, I'd only been fighting for a couple of months. But then he took me over to somebody, uh, Duke Brian Tarragon. And he goes, ah, oh, I'm King. I really don't want to mess around with this young punk. He goes, oh, you have to warm up. Well, I messed around and got lucky and killed him. That was my mistake. Because <laughs> then he proceeded to beat the crap out of me. <laughs> then he took me over to Baldar. Baldar beat the crap out of me. Then they whisper, whisper. Then they take me over to uh, Johan. And he shows me something called the Outland Rack. This dude stood in front of me, took off running, leapt up in the air as I stood there, did a rap that touched me at the top of the crack of my butt. I was like, what the hell was that? So I sat there for about an hour. 
Well, fast forward, I go to Crown, I throw everything at Duke Terrell but the kitchen sink. I don't have anything left. So I just went, ah, I had a single source. I went, eh, but I just ran at him and went, boom! And everybody just goes, ah! And I opened my eyes. <laughs> Holy crap! Now, the only crap was I'd only been fighting in the SCA for 16 months. So now I'm standing there, Prince, have no clue <laughs> what the hell, you know. So with that, I said, well, uh, Lorel, I went to Lorel, I said, man, how did you just shut me down that way? He said, well, I knew you were going to shut me, shut me, shut me, shut me, shut me, shut And I stood there with my mouth open going, well, how did you know that? He goes, I can watch you. And that was my first introduction into cataloging shots. I went, wow, why haven't I been doing that? So from that, I based, I always carry around something like this. So if I fight you and I get done fighting you, I don't care if I got you to pick the concept, I don't care. So my whole thing is I'm gonna write down what I consider your tells would be. It's like, oh, he likes to throw this shot. When he starts this shot, he does this motion. So with tactics and strategy, you have to come plan and prepare to do that. Now I'm gonna start him just fighting. Fighting, there's attack and defense. That's fighting. That's the basic thing. You have to attack and you have to defend, or you don't have to defend, but it will be over quick. So with that, you have, that's the basis of what everybody does. And the second part, or the second tier of that, would be recovery, because once I attack, I have to recover. And in the process of fighting, you naturally have to move. So that's the second tier of things that every single one of us does. There is nobody that doesn't do those four things. Now it breaks down into a different category. The physical, which is speed and strength. That is the physical part. So if you're exceedingly strong but slow, you're still gonna get killed because you're gonna be able to blow through people's uh, defense. If you are speedy uh, but not exceedingly strong, you may have to hit the guy a couple of times, maybe embarrass him into taking the shot, but you may not have enough power, but you're at least getting something done. The, uh, the On the same level of that, you have the mental. Yeah, and that is timing. Timing is essential for all of us, but it also can be the only thing that is necessary for you to get wins. Because if you, with timing comes cataloging of shots, uh, understanding the movement uh, that that individual is doing, being prepared is part of timing, knowing that if I'm gonna fight him or if I'm gonna meet him in a crown, I've done my due diligence because you guys have put tape out there on my back. And coming from football, I'm all about the tape. I will sit there and backwards and forward you for three days if I, just to figure out how you throw that specific shot. That's part of my preparation to get ready to go do the tournament or to go uh, create a plan or something of that nature. Now, with timing, is creativity. Well, let's, let me go back. The fight begins, you have the planning stage. The planning stage really lasts all of five seconds, maybe, because, you know, I'm looking at you going, Oh, I'm getting ready to lay it on you, man. I got it. I got this. I'm going to do this and this and this. Everybody's going to cheer. I'm going to stand there. My lady's going to love me. I'm going to drink. Drunk tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> so now I'm saying, boom, oh, boom, boom. You block everything. This is really great. Now what happens? What happens then is you go into creativity. Creativity mode is your lizard brain. It's the unadulterated you. There is no inhibitions. There's no walls. There's no nothing. That is the pure you, and I call that chasing the beast animal within because on pure instinct is how you survive because that's what the creativity part is and a lot of the slow work and stuff that we do is about training your creativity so if I'm standing there at the Pell and I'm going slow yeah it's boring but what I'm doing is realizing and teaching my subconscious what it needs to do that once I my plan goes to uh, <laughs> curse words will come out of my mouth so if you're offended sorry so when I have my <laughs> The shit I'm gonna do, if it doesn't go through, now I'm, I click into my uh, survival mode. And that is an inst natural instinct that you train. You could do this. Somebody asks you how you do that, you go, I don't know. Because what it is, is you don't wanna die. So your brain is on survival and your the, must, the engine takes over. So all the slow work and everything you do, you should hold that to great account. It may be boring, but I'm gonna give you some ways of not making it boring and a little bit more exciting. Um, I'm gonna go come back to creativity and plan. When you're doing your pelvis, 
I can stand out there with my sword all day long and stand here and go. But if I'm not using my mind, then it's just a repetitive motion. So if I'm going to do pell work, and I do it quite a bit, so if I'm going to do it on Monday, I may go and queue up somebody you all know, uh, Duke Stan. I'm going to queue up Duke Stan, and I'm going to queue up what he did in 2006. I'm going to queue up what he did in 2008. I'm going to queue up what he did in 2009, 2010, and I'm going to watch those. So now I'm out here at the Pell, and the person I'm really fighting is Duke Stan. Okay, he likes to throw here to here. So now I'm blocking, but still throwing my flat snap with the intent that I have to block, if possible, one of Duke Sten's speed shots. You know, that's a dream. Uh, you know, I don't know if it'll be possible. I was hoping he was here so I could eat a lot of wood. But uh, I just wanted to see it up close and personal after seeing it out there. So if you queue up people, and that is who, that is almost who you're training with. You could do Duke Sean that way. You could do Misty, uh, uh, I mean Rifkin that way, Akimasada, just to know exactly what they do so that when you're practicing your flat snap, you're practicing how am I going to get him with that flat snap. He likes to do this, this, do I wait? So in that whole process, you're working on your strength, your speed, and your timing, plus your lizard brain creativity motion because once he comes at you, the controlled chaos like the Masada comes with, and once he gets in close, it's all down to, oh my God, where is he going to be? And you can't have a plan for everywhere he's going to be because sometimes I don't know if he knows where he's going to be. And, but he's able to read that sight picture and get the kill in because he is allowing his lizard brain or instinctual ability to go into autopilot and he's allowing the one thing that we need uh, more for our strategy and planning, allowing his mind to be present and accepting of all things that it sees and, and to react to that at the time. So he may be here and he may be in a weird position, but if he sees an opening, his body, and since 21 years of fighting, he could be like this, but still, bam, you're like, how did the hell did he do that? Well, he did that because his body knew how to do it. His mind didn't tell him to do it. His body knew how to do it subconsciously, it was like, that's the sight picture I need, boom. And it's there, and it's a odd shot. You're like, wow, he was in a weird position. But if you understand your body mechanics, you can do that. So in, in hell work, if I'm standing here, throwing my flat snap, I'm figuring out, okay, so the energy turns up this leg, it moves to the center of my core, and now I can redirect it. I can send it off this direction or that direction. So everything that you do is about that. I can. I can throw the same amount of power from being here. If you really work on your muscle contraction, Bruce Lee does a two inch punch. All that is, well, it's his chi, a force of will. But what he does is he revs up his muscles to catch up to where he is. So if I start back here and I throw a punch like this, I grind down into the ground and I feel my core tighten, my butt cheeks tighten, my arm tighten. So what I, in my slow work, I'm just listening to how the muscles are talking to me. Now what I do is, from back here I do it, then I go a little bit closer. And what I do is mentally imagine my muscles revving up to catch up to that. So now instead of starting off smooth, I start off like that. So now I get to the point where I can hold this right here and then rev it up and still get the same engine. But you're revving and pulling that energy up through your body, same thing with the sword work. I can start back here, deliver that power, but sometimes you're gonna be here and your uh, shop's gonna be open. So you have to learn how to go from here to get that same pop into that. And it's just about understanding how to ramp your muscles up to complete the pack. So you find yourself revving and going rather than being tight and releasing? Right, so I'm, I'm relaxed and then I pop right into it. The relaxation is to make sure that you're receptive to the energy or basically gravity coming up through your person. Even though you're pulling energy up from the ground, you have your own personal energy that you can add to it. And that can be anything from just dropping a little bit, bending that knee, whatever is to accelerate your natural um, pull of energy from the ground. So that's where I say when you do it, practice for 20 blows here. And understand, then move to right here. 
and do your 20 blows. And then from here, do your 20 blows. Because at some point in time, you're going to be in one of those positions. And an opening is going to come up, and you're going to go, I missed that opportunity because I knew I couldn't get the power to get there. But if you work on that through slow work, you will be able to rev up to do that. Uh, I've been talking a while, so I'm going to toss out questions really quick. Anybody have any questions they would like to ask? Nothing yet? Nothing is. All right, we're going to go fishing again. Right. Uh, Sidetrack, do you have a uh -oh. sports background? Do you have a sports background? Uh, yeah, I'm a football player. Okay. Oh, that's what I thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the size, throw it away? No, uh, game psychology. Oh, okay. Um, oh, which is going to, it makes me, sorry, you made me think of, you said game psychology. Is there anybody here that feels they have turny choke? That's what's mine. Turny choke? Turny choke? Turny choke? So the question is, why do you think you, I've already asked you, why do you think you have turny choke? Okay. Hey, now, how much do you go outside of your team? Tamiki, can you repeat what he said? Oh, I'm sorry. He said the uncertainty of uncertainty of what you can do or what your opponent can do. Uncertainty in his own capabilities. Um, and you stay in kingdom a lot, right? Okay. So why would you have an uncertainty when you have fought Sir Tim 15 times? The uncertainty comes because you have not, one, either taken a fighting journal and catalog or understood what uh, he's doing. When you go to fight him and you fought him 15 times, there shouldn't be no uncertainty. You have tape, you have your past, uh, everything that you can rely on to fight this guy. The uncertainty is, could be, I'm going to say, uh, could be based on a win-loss ratio. And a win-loss ratio is not going to benefit you. If you win, okay, you win, and you get a chop scheme, you may even get something to put on your head. But you didn't learn anything. You learn from those losses, because you're like, oh, how are you kidding? And, and if you can see yourself dying, then you can shut it down. If he's hitting you with something you can't see, then the next time I fought him, I, didn't, I don't care about throwing. I'm going to make sure I can see every time he kills me. And that's a bonus. So even if he killed me, Times, if I saw all of them, I, they're still hope. And then I go and I create my plan. Goal. Okay, now he only's going to be able to kill me with close work. <laughs> and then you, you plod along until the point where you now can shut down everything. Or you alter your defense to make sure a person of his blows can hit you. Now he can hit you with some others, but that's going to force him into creativity mode, which is, you know, then becomes dicey, but yet dangerous as well. Uh, with that, you don't get planning, but you get unadulterated speed and strength. Because when there's nothing holding the back, you get faster in desperation. So I would say is if, uh, a thing that you need to do is maybe just look at a little more tape. And when I say look at tape, don't start it and then just look at it from beginning minute to the end minute. Break it down into, if they've done a shot, you then go over that shot. And uh, why do you think you have a self-deprecating uh, point of view as I am uncertain about my abilities. One is I was successful and it's kind of like self-sabotage. So then you go, oh, I can't win this. But you just won the first one in the blink of an eye. But now you talk yourself into that you can't win anymore. And you are just having fun. Easier to fix than these two. Uh, because this is you fighting yourself and your opponent. 
So, what I would say, uh, sports psychologists said that the best way to break out of that is you need to get something right down among, right down uh, a mission statement, right down a, a topic or whatever it is that's going to get you focused. Not on the fighting, but focused on yourself. And if you go to practice and do your bell work, and I stand there uh, just from being an actor, uh, I'm just going to say a, you know, a Shakespeare thing, but if I would be like, uh, I know where a wild time blows, where opposite, and the nodding by the grows, right over canopy, the lush blue by. And, and what I'm doing is staying within myself. I'm staying within my mind. And so, therefore, I don't worry about what's out here. I have brought everything here. I'm now the center of the universe, so to speak. And that's going to help you focus and stay intent on your target. And if you do that while you are practicing on the pell, what that teaches you to do is take that energy and then focus it onto a point. Because a lot of people worry about, oh, do I look good? Is my kid look good? And oh, is my lady looking? Does she see me throw this shot? And all that stuff. And I was like, oh, you thought about all that? And it's fine as a crown? Oh, it smokes. You know, the only thing I thought about is, uh, and then somebody said, oh, you know who you're fighting? No. Well, you're fighting Duke so and so. Oh, okay. You know, because I was so focused, and that is a thing that I would do in football, as you stand over there, you just get so psyched out that I don't care what's there, I'm going for my point. So what you do is you start worrying about everything. So I would say, work on something that uh, like that. Fine. And I would say don't pick something too outside of yourself. Pick things that are more centered about being positive uh, about what that. The positivity of, uh, of, sorry, I forgot his SEA name. I only know his uh, Monday name. Yeah, thank you. I hate, uh, but you know what I'm saying. But if you think about, okay, why did he decide to squire me? What were the qualities that he liked? So if you keep all that within your mantra, that is somebody that you have respect for and that has decided to you know, make you their student. So you are gonna, if you focus that way and out and not worry about, oh my God, I'm gonna die or I'm going to disappoint you. The only disappointment is that you stop trying. So just keep throwing it. I would say everybody, uh, I still to this day am, you know, been fighting. Uh, since I'm 17, I'm 46. I still, write down stuff. Not all the time, but I'll come across somebody and say, oh, look at that. I'm going to stop down with his arms and his like, because if I'm in a melee, I want to be able to go, oop, death's coming. <laughs> you know? And so, I mean, I have to know that. I don't want to sit there and go, oh, what's this guy? And then the next day I know I got a mouthful of whatever. And I'm like, whoa, I didn't know death was right there. I want to be aware when death hits the field. And so I want to know what he was going to do, and I want to know what his arms look like. Because if he starts floating that way, we're like, aren't you? <laughs> you know, if he gets him on his leg, then yeah, I'll, I'll saunter over maybe and go, how are you doing? Really? <laughs> no, you didn't. Your archer's got me. <laughs> it's neither here nor there. I use my archer's tactically. <laughs> so, um, so that is the, what you need to work on. I would say more tailored. If you're fighting people in kingdom, there should be no reason why you don't know exactly what they want. That comes down to cataloging and, and watching tape and watching it with a purpose instead of interviewing. Um, uh, let's see what else. I'll start bringing up a lot of uh, The other thing, when I was talking about creativity um, in timing, Um, pre -program, I, I touched the thing of pre-programming your creativity. Um, what we're going to do now is if everybody can stand up and get your... Uh, your uh, actually, before I do it, uh, can't you have your shield right there? I'm going to get my buckler here. The drill is this. You only get one action at the very beginning of this, the basic of that. You get one action on one beat. So I either can attack on one beat and then wait for you to attack and then defend on that beat. So what that is, is it's, it's not about me trying to hit you, it's about me trying to manipulate you and move you around. Um, to get in positions that you may find yourself in when you are fighting uh, fast, at some point in time you may find yourself here. But if you don't practice how to go from here, survive, and then come out of it, 
then you are not pre-programming your creativity. Because you're, you planning are not going to step out here like this. What's going to happen is you're going to be like, ah, he's going to throw something in my head, I'm going to duck, and now I'm here. I haven't practiced what to do for you. Holy shit. So now we go straight back. And that's great. <laughs> you know, instead of, ah, I'm right here. Why didn't I just go? You know, or why didn't I just do this? We all, and we all back out. I will do it probably 50 times a day. Uh, but it's, oh my God, because I don't know what to do. So in this pro uh, process, I stand here. I go 1,001, I make my attack. You do 1,002, I make my defense. Now, stand for 1,001. process of this is moving around to get yourself to see if I can move my opponent to make him go over there and force him to go around. So it's all about figuring out how you're going to move your opponent. We were fighting and I wanted to get you in the corner. I would, and I'd come at you all close like this, but stay close like that so there's nothing that you can do. When, that, when people see a big guy like me roll in and start going, they're like, what the hell? I was like, yeah, it's tiring me out too. <laughs> but I need it <laughs> to get you to go where I need to go. But it also threatens everybody. Oh, big man can move. We're out of planning mode and oh shit. So what we're practicing on this is just a movement drill. Boom. Boom. Now I want to step. is looking to where he's throwing and allowing myself so what I want is to pick a partner your objective is to try to move around your opponent while you are fighting it's not about hitting him it's about getting yourself in position where you have to figure out how to survive so that you're pre-programming your instinctive creativity. So if you could get your shield, so oh. you're, yeah, you're, not, you're not worried about, oh, he's throwing that technique, yeah. great. You're going, son of a bitch, <laughs> you know? Uh, so it's, it's the end. Uh, so you, can, you don't get a chance to relish it because it's your end. He gets to stay there and go, or she, I look sweet on tape. You know, and they'll play that over and over and you'll be the poster as Jordan is, you know. I don't want to be that dude. Jordan is up there and I don't want to be the dude with my face in his crotch on the kids thing and they all see number 16 with my name right on it. Yeah, I'm not going to be that dude. Uh, you know, uh, I, I gave an analogy of, in a modern game, there should be no reason in basketball for somebody to score 82 points in a game. But Kobe did it. And I said, how is that possible? If I have five fouls, He's only going to run through there once on me, and he's going to catch a bow in the mouth, <laughs> and I might get thrown out of the game, but he ain't running through there again. And that's the same thing with SCA fighting. Oh, he just smoked. Oh, that ain't happening. That ain't happening again. All right, I'm going to lock that down. But this whole process is to reach and go beyond to pre-program what is going to happen in the creative mode. So when you're doing that slow work, it's not about hitting, it's about stepping in positions that you have been in and that you know you've been in with fighting. There's no way I'm going to reach out there and try to do a leading thumb wrap to my man right here and so that he can drop thunder all on my armpit and make me cry for the next six weeks. But there's going to be a time where I slip or he's done something to fake me out and I'm there. And if I don't know what to do, it's over. I just wonder, another aspect of that is we're doing it standing and not well, taking leg shots. Right, right. But then, but you should do it after you do it. Oh, shit, I've got a leg. Oh. I'm dropping it now, and now I'm in a awkward uh, position. Well, I think you want me to touch on my lean back that yeah. you're all <laughs> Uh We were fighting at the Rose Tourney, 
And all he said to his ears like, you're sweet. Because uh, when I get on my knees, I can't, if I got on my knees now and tried to bend back, uh, you would, it was a local hospital, that's where I would be. But when I'm fighting for some reason, and that's why I tell you that your creative mode untaps your full potential. In creative mode, I can lean back and almost touch my shoulder to the ground. I can't do that thinking about it because I put too many blocks on my head. Life has gotten to me. There, um, right now I'm going to get to the what I call path switching, which is a come off of this. From my shoulder to the side of your head, if I were 18 years old, I never had an injury or anything, it'd be sweet as butter. I could throw this shot from here to here. Perfect, perfect path to that. But with life, uh, motorcycle accidents, uh, in my case, some street fighting, a uh, little football, and things like that. It puts all these kinks in there. So what you have to figure out is the sweet motion from here to here is no longer there. Because when I get to here, oh, my, my knee's hurt. So I have to alter that. My back's hurting. So now I have to alter that. My shoulder's hurt. So now what happens, you have like eight or nine hitches within that. In those hitches, what we have done with my sword, if I hold my sword out, go up to, to 10. From my sword, it would look like a rope. But from that rope, it would come out and display. From here, there's a perfect path to take your leg, your foot, your arm. All those lead from here to there. Anytime I alter and change, I'm switching the path of that. So that's why I call it path switching. So we'll be here, and it's the shot that we want to go here, but actually the opening comes there. We've hopped over a couple of paths to do that. So you have to learn how to flow from that and how the body mechanics are going to allow you to flow from here to get that shot. Uh, Aikido and a lot of other stuff that I've done has allowed for where I do motions like that when I fight. So if I'm standing here, I go, I throw a shot that way, come out and throw that. And it's about popping all of that. It almost looks like I'm break dancing sometimes, but that's how I get my shot when I'm doing it. I'll float back here and, and it's like that. So that's the purpose of the pass switching, is to know how to get that. I don't do it that drastic because it's all in my hand, but it's still the same thing. So as life goes on, we put roadblocks <coughs> into our perfect path. Slow work, hell work, is what we need to figure what those paths are. Anybody that comes up to me in several paths, Oh, I stopped fighting. I've mastered this one. I don't know. Oh. Wow. I've been fighting forever. And I still feel horrible. You know, I don't feel like I can. It's, I want, I'm a perfectionist. I will never be perfect. So therefore, I'll always be working on it. I think you should help me. To me, I would go up to him and I said, hey, dude, how old are you? 48. I said, OK, tomorrow, you think you're going to be as fast as you are today? Yeah, really. Okay, 10 years from now, do you think you're going to be as fast as you are today? Uh, I said, so you stop fighting because you say you've conquered this, and you're master. 10 years go by, and you're going to come back. Okay, if you're a master then, you should be able to master it now. But you're not going to be able to do the things that you did then because you haven't figured out from that 10-year path every day, it's a journey. So if I fight for 10 years, I'm going to naturally progress into accepting all of my ailments as part of my style. If I don't fight, I don't have any training to compensate for all my ailments. So when I come back, they revert back to, well, I could kill you before I left. Yeah, yeah but he's hitting you now. Uh, what did you Oh, so we're going to go that route. OK, anybody can win on that route. You know, uh, I've seen, I won't even get into it. I've seen several with strawberry leaves quadruple time that wouldn't accept anything. But you're like, eh. You know, you're taken away from your word thing. Because back in the day, you were slick as butter. Now, because you haven't taken the time to learn how to fight to suit what life has given you. So that's the purpose of the slow work uh, and not doing things fast on the pill. You have to learn and understand your body on a daily basis. Because I stump my toe and I'm going to fight Saturday. If I haven't done anything to kind of 
feel how oh, I can't push off as much. So if I can't push off here to get enough power, how can I? Well, since I did ballet, you know, I started stepping out and figuring out positions that I can put my foot in that doesn't hurt my toe so that I can get the same power. And then I practice stepping to that point. And even though it may be just for a few days until my toe is better, I'm still working on something that may come back into play four years from now, five years from now, but I've worked through that plan. And so that is my thing of always being prepared, part of the tactics of getting in there. You'll know everything that you can do so you can release that and accept everything that's coming from your opponent and then apply whatever strategy or tactic you want on that opponent. Uh, the path switching thing, um, if we had a pill, well, we'll probably do it tomorrow. Somebody will bring a pill tomorrow and I'll work more on <laughs> that portion of it. I set my notes down and started running my mouth and I always, that always happens. Uh, don't give me your car keys, I will lose them. Once this opens, everything in my hand becomes lost. Uh, the other... Okay. Um, when I was talking about the planning, uh, the planning stages of your fight, uh, there are two parts of the planning stage of your fight. There, is, uh, there are people that will be the aggressor in their planning stage, and then there's people that will be the defensive on their planning stage. Um, if you run into somebody that is a defensive planner, uh, it's going to be a little bit easier for you because they're going to accept everything you toss, that you toss at them. And with that, you get a chance to learn how they're moving their weapons and everything. Oh, uh, sorry, you may be remember something they're talking about. There are times that these things get in the way. And when I say get in the way, he's standing over there. Man, I'm horrible with names here. Ian. Ian. Uh, he's standing over there with Ian. He, Ian is, I don't know, 38, 39, I don't know how old. But he's 43. And I said, and he was allowing him to control the fight through these weapons. And so I looked at him and I go, why are you allowing him to do that? I said, you're 43 years old. Your weapon, the weapons that you have, you have with you all your life. This body and that mind. So you're going to allow a piece of stick and a piece of wood to convince you that you can't take my man there? You, you got about six inches on him and a big reach. So why are you allowing that to take away from your true weapon, which is your body? So at any point in time, you should never be afraid of somebody or not really dying. So that's where we put too much emphasis on the winning. You know, yeah, he may beat you, but he's going to do it in an unorthodox way because my crotch is either going to be stuck to his crotch or whatever <laughs> is going to happen. I'm not going to let him sit out there and do it. And since he is who he is and you've been fighting there, okay, what are the percentage chance that you really uh, are going to beat him, you know, 80 or 90% of the time? No? Okay. Thing is, jump in. Only one going to learn. And every time he sees you, you know, oh, this dude's like to jump. So his plan may be, okay, he's going to do whatever, 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 whatever. And then you may change it up. But your brain is just as good as his. And if you can outthink him, you think every day. So don't rush in there and fall right into his strength. It's like, oh, he likes to do whatever. Do completely opposite. You're going to lose. But so what? He's not going to kill you the way he's used to killing you. And, that, and what happens is that builds a pattern. So now, every time he sees you, he's going to be like, oh, what is this guy going to do this time? No more planning. From the beginning of the fight, it's all creative because he has no clue what you're going to do. And that's what you want to shoot for. No patterning to your method. So what you've done is, if you've done your planning, I know he likes to do specific something, whatever, so now I just block those off and force him into creativity. And then we start the fight. I'm not going to let him start in his sweet spot. His sweet spot has allowed him two coronets in the crowd. That's that, you know? And if I have to run in there and just let him, ah, as I thrust him in the face, he'll remember, oh, Jesus. Yeah, you double killed with him, uh, you double killed with him, and he's probably gonna get you again, he's not gonna fall for that, but it's, it's something. Or, you know, you stand there and you, you go, hey, you throw out a little leg, hey, sexy, you like a little thigh action there, baby? And if he don't go for that, you can a little wink and nod. Dinner in a movie, you can have all this. You know? <laughs> so, so you entice him to go where you want him to go. So 
So that's how you control the fight. Even though you're going to lose, you still control the fight right there because you made him hit here and you made him go here. You made him do that. So once you learn how to manipulate an individual, I'm an actor, so I will throw in acting too. I'll get up there and go. <laughs> Oh, son of a bitch. Bam! And they were like, what? I thought you would act in 101, thank you. You know? So I will do that just because it's fun. That's side warfare right there, baby. You know? I just want to touch on what you said about, um, about Luke, even though you lost, you made him hit you in the leg, made yeah. him hit you in the head. And if you could, if you could learn from that, that you, that you, you created an action, yeah. Then that, that becomes something that's repeatable, right? Exactly. Like if, you, if you can, if you can, if you can gain enough control of the fight that I can tell Austin hit me in the thigh, and I can, and I, and I can control that reaction from him, I, I have taken away a huge amount of the, of the ability for him to deliver a leg shot because I now know how to make it come. And so now I know that. how to make it come and put my shield exactly. away next time. <laughs> so you get to you make him throw something, and he doesn't even know you're training him to train you how to watch stuff. Oh, that's how he's doing that. Okay. You know the two openings that are coming. Okay, if you can't block those, it's because they're blinding the speed, you know, speed. But, you know, you're going to lose anyway on that. If you, if you know that this is open and you still can't block it, you're pretty much going to lose if you don't open it, too. Because if you know what's coming and you lose, you take it, you're not going to see it. Yeah. But that is the part of strategy and tactics when you're getting in there. It's not just roll in there, fought everybody here at least 15 times. There should be no reason why you don't have a game plan separate for each individual that's here and know what they did. Uh, any other questions? All right. Um, the other... Um, that, I'm going to save that for tomorrow. Um, what time do we have and how long have we been going? I don't think anybody's planning on leaving anytime soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, so I can, oh, that's, you shouldn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah. I'll, be really hard. <laughs> I'll be here all day. Uh, I just didn't want to, you know, Clear be my here calendar. and just, I, I will talk a lot. I want to do, do some doing. Um, what, uh, everybody's, I'm used to it being called the ABC drill. But I think the new terminology, new SEA, is the one through six drill? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, can I borrow you again? <coughs> All right. I have, uh, this is a one through six drill, but it's done in a fashion that me, as the person, I'm going to do the normal one through six drill, which is one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. But what's going to happen is, since I know what I'm doing, uh, in my creative mode I've worked on it, and I know that I have the right of mechanic to throw that, in between, I'm going to introduce the thing, and I go, okay, we're going one. We're not going to go one, and in between that, you're going to throw, and I'm going to throw that one. Then I'm going to go one, two. So you pick anywhere you want to throw on me. So the objective is, I'm here, I have my plan, I go boom. Then one, wait, wait, you have to go in between. So I go one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five. So you do that one time through, switch, and then that person does it. And what that is doing is having you have your, uh, basically it's your lizard brain, since we already know we're doing the one through six drill, your lizard brain is, where, uh, is moving the engine and your mind is looking for where it has to block. So that's what happens when you get into creative mode. It's, oh, and this just starts moving and you're like, oh, and this hand is moving. So what you're doing is you're training uh, two processes happening at the same time. All right. Uh, so we can. Do, what we're going to do is do this slow, without helms. Tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to ramp it up and put all the theory into uh, application. 
and you're gonna be, oh, actually we'll do it later on today. Everybody fight all the way out, and we do the same drill at speed, and it will teach you how to do timing. So that's the purpose of that, is timing in between a shot. It helps you get in between my beats, and it helps me establish my beat, but yet have an off beat for my block. So it's boom, boom, but it's actually boom, boom, boom for me, and it's boom, boom for you. So it's a different timing step that you will get used to. Um, uh, for, uh, for the slow work, yes, on this. When we were doing the other two-second drill, it's about movement. This is more about timing, learning how to get in between someone's beat. Now, once you've done this enough, you will be able to then move about like you did on the two-second drill and do the same thing. But at the initial, I just want it boom, boom, and just stand still until you get the rhythm down. And if it's pick a buddy or later on, course of the week or next month, you guys can work it out where you can then get it all into the movement and everything. But we will touch some of that. So that is just about timing and learning how to uh, off-pace your opponent. Uh, I think we're going to leave it that. and go ahead and get your gear up and we're going to stand up and work on that. So is everybody familiar with the 1-2-6 one, uh, the one drill? What I want to do is so everybody's on the same page. Is how you do it for this is you, uh, you announce or present the shot. So I go one, so that you know we're working on one. And then one, 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 two. And then if you want to go on to two, it would be two, and then back. Then two, one. So just present where you're going first, so everybody's on the same page, and then proceed with the normal process of that. Uh, go slow. Uh, there are those of you that have been fighting along, but you can pump it up to 25% and still get an understanding of what your body's doing. But for those that haven't been fighting a long time, Keep it slow so you can realize what your body is doing at the same time. So pair up again. Anybody unfamiliar or unclear of what we're going to be doing? And we're going to fight. But we're really not going to fight, fight. That's for tomorrow. What we're going to do is get in armor, and we're going to take what we did today and put it into action. But I want you to fight full out. But we're going to do this one through six drill with the shot in between. And we're going to... Uh, probably start off at 50% and then bump it up a little bit more. I don't want to go full out, full out, until everybody has an understanding. So this fighting is not about <laughs> testing your opponent. It's about helping your brother become better. Because if you can fill his cup up full of knowledge, then you can empty yours and start anew and learn more, because they're going to be the basis for it. Uh, if you are a high-end fighter, I hate high-end fighters, but well, I don't show people my trick shots. And I'll be like, oh, so they must not work all the time. <laughs> and everybody goes, what? I was like, well, if you can't show me and still hit me with it, then it's bullshit. It's luck. And what you're doing is you're waiting for your opportunity for luck. So everybody should know what you, exactly what you throw. That's the fun of the thing. It's like, you know what I'm throwing? Okay. Bam. Oh, I thought you knew what I was throwing, man. What's up? And then you're like, oh, well, you sucked at me. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't suck you at all. It's the same thing I threw five minutes ago. I may have thrown some other bull crap in there between, but that's just to get you rattled and thinking about something else. You know, whether you paid your bill, I made back up, and you'd be at all tired, and I'd just you keep running away. Hey, man, I wasn't ready. Really? <laughs> you know? Uh, so that is what we're going to go for when, we, when you get in your kit. So pick the person that you want to, and you, it's the same one that you want to learn from. Tomorrow, you get a chance to kill them. Today, it's about passing knowledge back and forth to one another. All right? So we will, uh, how long is there taking her? It takes me forever, because I'm going to have to go in there and stretch and talk with Jesus or whatever to get my body uh, working. <laughs> <laughs> so it probably take me like 30 to 40 minutes, because I do like to stretch and do acupressure stuff before. Uh, I guess I will mention that. For, any of you, uh, I have a problem of uh, <laughs> thinking about fighting in the course of a day at least two to three hours every single day, and I try hard to lay off the crack, but I can't. So <laughs> my, but my problem with that is I'll spend my time sitting there watching TV, and I'll have my portable pill, and I'll still be doing that. And with that, I end up, you know, overtaxing my 46-year-old elbow. So I don't really have tennis elbow, but I have just get tired a lot. So I do, I'll just show anybody that has a, a elbow problems the acupressure thing that I do. Your hands, 
throw it down to the side like this. What you're going to do is take this hand, and you're going to say motion to where I'm going to try to bend my fingers to touch the back of my hand. So this is the first portion of it. I go 1001 all the way to uh, 10, and I slowly release that. Then I turn my hand sideways, take the same hand, and from my thumb and index finger, I try to get a torque around, so I'm rolling around that way. And I hold that for 10 seconds. Then I take my fist and I bend it. And where that little uh, tendon, the hole in that tendon, I let go. I take my thumb and press there until my fingers close. And I hold that for 10 seconds. I release that. I take the knuckle on this finger and I place it with the knuckle on my wrist. So they're even. And where the tip of that finger meets, you want to raise your finger up, put your thumb in that position, and as you're raising your arm this direction, you're pushing, pushing in between your radius and ulna. And you hold that for 10 seconds. Then you bend your arm and wear the crease of your forearm and your bicep meet. You want to take your thumb and press in there and hold for 10 seconds. Do the same thing here. Hold for 10 seconds. Then you come up to your clavicle. You put your first finger right where that is, where the pinky finger lands, right where it meets the shoulder. There, and when you push in there, you will feel it's very tender. And you roll that around for 10 seconds. And what that does is it releases all the, the tension that is within that arm. As you do that, uh, it takes all of a minute before, and you do it immediately after, and uh, it will relieve some of that tension and tightness that you have in there, plus the normal stretches that we normally do. But that's just what I've added in to try to alleviate some of the pressure on that, in case anybody has a problem. You just do that your sword? I, I do it for both. I Preventative and, you know, if I'm going to do one, you know, why not do the other? Yeah. So, uh, and I will say that, uh, Within two months, it relieved, remember I was telling you, that's what relieved a lot of my uh, pain. Because I don't really like to leave all that much. I like pain, it sounds weird. Pain lets me know when there's something wrong. I don't want to ever mask that and then go beyond and then not be able to fight. So I, when I do a leave, I don't do the, what I should be doing, which is the regimen. I do like one and then let that ride me to the day and I'll just deal with other methods of getting rid of the pain. Um, I just, that's just the thing I like to do because I want to be aware of what my body is doing. Um, and that is the whole thing with all of this, is understanding what your body is doing, why it's doing it, and how to make yourself do it. Part of the tactics and strategy of fighting is having all that information. You can throw the best technique shots on the planet. If you don't have anything going on up here, then it's a waste. And so that's kind of what I've noticed a lot of people teach technique is how I throw the shot, but nobody ever works on how to get yourself in the mental frame and attach uh, or attack issues like having turny choke or figuring out how to get out of the turny choke. Because what we will do is we won't go and sit in front of, well, since I'm a huge nerd, I will go and Google everything on psychological warfare, whatever that is that will help me get through that, uh, <coughs> through that issue. Um, the last thing I will leave with uh, is part of your uh, tactics and strategy and tournament fighting with sword and shield. If after you've done your pell work, you don't stand in front of the mirror for 15 to 20 minutes looking at your different defensive positions to know what's open, I will say these words. You have failed. Because the only thing you can control is your defense right here. You can't control what he's going to throw. But you need to know that if I stand here, this is open, this is open, and this is open. I don't need to look for anything else. I don't need, if he moves a little quadrant that's blocked, I don't even need to move my shield. I need to just accept it and then fire from that. So you need to know where your openings are. With your defensive stance, you're, I always say you start off, everybody has a neutral defensive position. Uh, can I see a round here? Uh, so you get into a neutral defensive position. I should be able to throw my shot but leave my shield because that is where I can get to if, if I'm fighting if I'm fighting a lefty, I probably wouldn't roll out this way, especially with a round shield on him. 
I probably would come back here. If I felt a little frisky that day, I may do this because I want him to come over there, I, but I have to be willing to, because it's more likely he's gonna hit that. Uh, but I also will still keep my shield in that neutral defensive position. And a lot of times people will start getting into it and then, whoa, hello. You know, so what you need to practice when you're doing your pell work, as well as holding the sword there. And my shield doesn't dip, doesn't move. I can duck behind it. If I want to go down for the leg shot, but still, uh, uh, a lot of times people want to just joint their shield down. That is acceptable as well. Is that So if I were going to block my leg, but still wanted to throw a shot, I would throw this, because what I've done is just drop that that much, and that's going to protect everything over there. Now what's going to happen is probably draw down into my knee, and then I'll be where I am with this knee. Uh, that's why I fight with a round shield. Today I'm going to be fighting with a square shield. But that is what you need to work on as well, is keeping your shield in a neutral defensive position and not let it drift and everything. With that, you can shut down a lot of people's normal progression. I put if, if I know you like to hit up here, I may start here. And all I have to look for is stuff over here and things that you drop. Yeah, and, and even if you come down to the middle, it's just, well, you did eight frame on it, not too hip on that. But uh, you can even block it by doing that. There is no one specific way. What I'm saying is, you have a way that you like to hold your shield. You need to self-actualize yourself, stand in front of the mirror, and go, okay, this is what's most comfortable for me. And if somebody's left-handed, this is what's most comfortable. Now, in these positions, what are the shots that are coming? That's part of your plan. You should know what's going to be thrown on you before your opponent. Right. Yeah. All right? Uh, yeah. I'll stop talking. Uh, everybody, uh, let's get an armor, and we're going to do that one through six at about 50%.